Hi, this is Alan Gleason for ADSR, and today we'll be looking at how to sync a modular synth to Ableton Live. There are a number of ways to achieve this, so let's see what's involved. In order for Ableton to clock or trigger our synthesizer, we need to use a trigger signal in the form of a pulse. There are different ways to produce this sound, and in this first example, we're going to use operator. I've set up a short envelope using a white noise as my oscillator. I'm using the arpeggiator to trigger the signal and I've just got a note drawn in at C3 for one bar. We'll just have a quick look at the signal flow on the synthesizer. This green cable here is our signal coming from Ableton, which is triggering our envelope generator, just controlling our VCA over here. We've got an oscillator plugged into our VCA and we're also using, we're splitting the signal that's coming from Ableton to trigger a sample and hold, which has been quantized and then been fed into an oscillator to give us pitch variation then the output of the VCA is going back into the sound card. So the arpeggiator is going to send 16 into operator, and the output of that is going to be sent to the external output of my sound card, which in turn is going to be fed into my modular synthesizer. So when I hit play, if the trigger signal is too long, we get the envelope been triggered too many times in the modular synth. If the signal is not loud enough, the synthesizer will lose sync with Ableton. I have volume control here. If I needed additional volume control, I could use a utility to boost the signal even further. The second technique I'm going to look at is actually using a pulse loaded into sampler. We can generate this waveform in any number of ways, say maybe creating a square wave in Audacity and then editing it and importing it in here. But I'm just going to use my operator to generate the waveform. You may or may not know that in operator, when you create an oscillator here, you can export this as an AMS file, which you can then use on an audio track or sampler within Ableton. I'm just going to select a square wave. And because that's a default wave pattern, it doesn't allow you to export it. But if I modify that in any way, just by just clicking on it, I can then export it which will create this waveform here. If we drag it out to an audio track, just double click on it, I can see I've got a square wave. So what I've done previously is that I've created a sampler and dragged it in there. So I'll just do that again. So we get my waveform and drag it onto a MIDI track. And I get my pulse. I only really need the high phase or the on part of the pulse. So I can close down my dart and end loops on that point. And similar to the way in the operator track where we had an arpeggiator triggering the signal. On this track here, we've got a slight variation in that now I'm using the mono sequencer. So that if I don't want to continue a 16 note pattern, I can alter this in my gate signal down here. So that's the operator. And if we switch over to the simpler, Let's have a look here. So it's sending it out. This, we need to obviously increase the gain. So it's currently it's been triggered every time at the beginning of the note. Where if I turn on the, if I stop that and turn on the mono sequencer. This section here is where we're looking at here. This is what's doing the triggering. So if they're all there, we'll get a 16 note pattern again. If we change the pulse, we can get an eight or a dotted 16, say. If we put it back to 16th, I can add some swing. If I move some of the gates, I'll get a variation in the pattern. Currently it's on, the counting mode is on drunk there, so it's kind of wobbling around. So every, so every time the sampler is triggered, it sends a gate signal out to my synthesizer and triggers the envelope generator and also the sample and hole generator, which is giving our pitch information into the oscillator. The final method we're going to look at is actually using a Max for Live device. This is a free Max for Live device 
developed by Spectro Audio, and it's available at maxforlive.com. It has a number of features, but the one we're interested in is clock generation. In this section here, we select where the output is routed to, and you can see for all these examples, I have it routed to the same output on my sound card. So we turn this off here, it's set to 16 So when I hit play, we're getting a 16th note trigger. I change the, the multiplication or the division. So that's three methods to sync your modular synthesizer to Ableton, either using operator, a simpler with a pulse wave in it, or using a Max for Live device. A thing that I already mentioned is if you're not getting the signal triggering correctly, you need to increase the gain because modular signal levels generally work at a higher level than normal instruments. This has been Alan Gleason for ADSR and I'll catch you again next time.